everyone, and welcome to another episode of Marksman Weekly. Today's episode is going to be all about the MK14. The gameplay we'll be watching is me using the MK14 on Sovereign. I'll admit this game starts out pretty bad, but then uh, comes together near the end, and I thought it was a perfect episode to record an MK14 review on, because despite me and the next best player on the team having very good games, our team ends up losing, and that kind of contradictory is probably the theme of today's episode. Everything about the MK14 is both the best and the worst, basically. I was very surprised when I started looking up numbers for this gun, thinking, oh, I can't wait to see how bad this is, and then it turns out to be extremely good, statistically, with one exception, which ruins the whole darn thing. In the year 2000, the United States Navy SEALs requested a more compact version of the M14 battle rifle. And in 2004, the MK-14 EBR was born. It has been employed by the United States Special Ops since 2004. And in 2010, began being employed by the United States Infantry in the form of two rifles per platoon. It has been deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq and is chambered for a 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO round. It is an exceptionally long range weapon with an effective range of 800 meters, which is 100 meters short of the effective range of the Brazilian IA-2, however, is still a very long range indeed. It has a max range on a point target of 2.5 miles and a max range of an area target of 4 miles. The in-game version of the MK-14 is where all of the contradicting starts. It's almost as though the developers of the game decided to make a weapon that was 100% accurate to its real-life counterpart, and then realized, you know, guys, we have just made something that is by far the most overpowered weapon in this game. We've got to dumb it down a bit. And then they just went overboard with the nerfs on it before release, and so what should be and statistically probably is one of the most powerful weapons in the game becomes a very useless weapon in my opinion i find it very underwhelming it has the highest max damage in its class but only by two above the svu with 70 high damage but it does carry that max damage out to 32 meters which is the farthest in its class and about 11 meters farther than the SVU starts its damage drop-off. The problem is that it will drop all the way down to 49 damage, which is very, very high. That's still higher than any assault rifle is going to deal at its peak. However, it will mean that you have a three-shot kill range starting at 53 meters. The rate of fire is 480, which is not the slowest, but it is only 80 rounds per minute faster than the SVU and it is very easily oversampled. Magazine size of 18 with 27 extended mags is fairly standard in the class. There's not much really special or negative about that. The reload is very slow, a 4 second empty reload time, 2.9 second full reload time, and 1.8 second reload cancel time. And when you look at the recoil, this is where I said, oh, I can't wait to see how bad the recoil on this thing is because it feels terrible. The, the truth of the matter is it has the lowest recoil in its class statistically. However, it has the lowest recenter speed and not by a little bit, Friendly by a coming. lot. It is by far the slowest recentering weapon in the class, which means that what is statistically very low recoil becomes, in reality, extremely high recoil and is just not an easy weapon to use. Up close, it sucks because it's only got 480 rounds per minute, leaving its time to kill at 4.2 seconds or 5.5 seconds in this three-shot kill range, which is extremely slow for this game. And that is, of course, after adding in the standard 0.3 second ADS time. The bottom line of the MK-14 is that it is statistically a very powerful gun, a very strong gun, and by looking at the numbers, you might think this is an overpowered gun that needs to be nerfed quite a bit. 
but in practicality, it is a very, very weak gun. It has the highest max damage of any non-sniper, however, not the highest damage profile because of how far it drops down, and it, uh, frankly, ha with its slow uh, fire rate, becomes a pretty slow time to kill. You're not going to have an advantage with this weapon very often. And beyond that, it's, it's uh, recoil being the lowest in the class. I haven't looked at all of the weapons. It might actually be the lowest in the game. Coupled with an extremely, extremely slow recenter speed, it means that what should be the strength of this weapon actually ends up being one of the glaring weaknesses of this weapon. It's You would think that this would be a strong long-range weapon, but dropping down to three shots to kill at long range and having such a slow recenter speed means that this weapon actually becomes a very weak long-range weapon. I, I don't find it very easy to, to get long-range shots, and by long-range I don't mean long shot range where you get rewarded extra points by the game. I, I simply mean, you know, ranges from across Stonehaven, ranges from across uh, Stormfront. Ranges like that, it, you know, restaurant to bridge and Stormfront is not an easy shot to make with this weapon. It's not the hardest in the game, but it's not as easy as it should be. And that should be the strength of the gun. As far as my class setup for this gun is concerned, I plan on doing a full marksman perk setup and attachment setup video later on. I'll go in depth into every attachment, every perk, every kill streak, and explain why they are very good for marksman rifles or why they're terrible for marksman rifles. But just for everyone's information, what I used in this game was silencer and armor piercing rounds. That's my standard loadout for pretty much any gun. And as far as perks are concerned, I did Ready Up, Marathon, Dead Silence, Amplify, Focus, Hardline. And uh, I, I avoided some of the other speed perks. A lot of people like to use Quick Draw. A lot of people think about Stalker. I don't really care for those on, this, on the uh, Marksman class, and I'll explain why in a later episode. So be sure to subscribe and, and uh, don't miss out on that. As far as my... Kill streaks are concerned. I use the dog on pretty much every class just because I know I can get the dog. Every sing I could go negative, and at some point during the game, I'll have a dog. It's just not a very hard thing to earn, and it makes me feel kind of special to get kill streaks even when I'm playing badly. Aside from that, I my standard setup is dog, griffin, helo, pilot. I think that's a very strong setup. It's a setup where I know that if I get all three of my kill streaks, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get more than 25 kills in TDM, probably 30 or 40 in something like Kill Confirmed or Domination. However, uh, people have mentioned to me in the past about my videos saying the gameplay is kind of slow, and that unfortunately is just the style of a marksman. It's it's not a rushing weapon. It's, it's not a real fast-paced, fun-to-watch, movie-quality weapon. It's more of a strategy-based... Uh, preparation type weapon not camping but not rushing either so the gameplays are not going to be the most exciting so I decided maybe I can spice up the gameplays a little bit with my uh, what are they called uh, kill streak set up and so I decided I wanted to use the maniac kill streak because the maniac is probably the most exciting thing to watch in this game He's he runs super fast he has to get up a close and personal he he can take a bunch of bullets and just is a, uh, a complete speed demon monster out of hell. And I really enjoy playing with him, and I'm sure that he's more entertaining to watch than, you know, flying a griffin around. And so what I do, what I've started to do, especially for video game plays, is go dog, battle hind, maniac. Uh, the reason I don't go Maniac than Helo Pilot is because I want my Maniac to be the last thing I call in. You'll notice I don't call in a Maniac until after I die. And the reason for that is because when you're using a Maniac, it's a guaranteed death. You either are going to finish the game as the Maniac, or you're going to die. It'll never expire, it'll never time out on you. You are 
going to stay in that suit until you die or the game ends. And what that essentially does is it ruins your chances of getting a chem strike. I've never gotten a KM. I would really like to get a chem. I don't specifically try to get chems. I'm not running specialist streaks and going for for a chem strike. However, I don't want to eliminate my chances of getting one either if I have already gotten the 10 kills in a row necessary to earn the Maniac, then it stands to reason I have a pretty good shot at getting the next, what would it be, 15 kills it needed to get a chem strike. And calling in the Maniac and putting on that suit eliminates any chance of doing that because any kill with a kill streak isn't going to count towards your chem strike and I don't get an opportunity to use my weapon again until after I die. So that's why I go Battle Hind there. I'm not a big fan of the Battle Hind. I think it's kind of weak. I, I'll admit that I don't enjoy it when other people call in Battle Hinds. However, there's been way too many times where I'll call it a Battle Hind and it won't even shoot a bullet at somebody. It'll just hover around the top of the map kind of annoying people and then disappear. Or it'll get me two or three kills. It's just not a very powerful streak, I'm not a big fan of it, but it is the best thing between Dog and Maniac, so that's why I chose that kill streak loadout. And uh, I would like to thank you for listening and watching. Uh, be sure to catch my upcoming videos, they should be pretty good. Next week is going to be an SVU review, I've been waiting a long time for the opportunity to do an SVU review, spoiler alert, it is by far my favorite gun in this game. If I had my way, I would only ever use the SVU, but I'm sure that that would get a little monotonous for the viewers of my YouTube channel, so I like to mix it up a bit. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And uh, till my next video, have a good week.